Hello. This video is a documentation of my first table saw cross cut sled build. I designed this sled on SolidWorks before I started making it. There were some adjustments and modifications that I made along the way. A few mistakes were made, but rather than editing them out, I thought I'd keep them in just to show you how I dealt with those issues. This uh, sled in front of me isn't exactly as I had planned, as I still have to add in a zero tolerance plate here into the 45 degree miter section here. It's a little bit dangerous having that exposed. But to be honest, I actually need to use this sled for some products I'm making for my business. So what I'm gonna do is make a YouTube short video later on to show you how I've added in that zero tolerance plate. Uh, right now, I just don't have the hardware to do that. So I'm gonna retrofit it later on. So uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn your notifications on so you don't miss that addition to this build. And as I said, this is my first sled build. Some modifications were made. Hope you enjoy. So first, let's have a quick look at the materials and accessories I will be using. We have a multi-slot L-shaped T-track. We have some general slot T-track, uh, our plans, and a sheet of MDF that we're gonna use for the base. And then just a spare little bit of MDF here for the back and front stocks. So the first part I'm gonna work on is preparing the left side of the sled. For this next little section, first going to zero out a bench and then I'm going to set my blade to 45 degrees. Alright, so we're spot on 45 there. Okay, so on the right hand side of the sled, it's actually going to have a 45 degree miter cut on it so that when I need to run pieces of timber at a 45, I've got the clearance to do so. All right, so now we've got the base, we've got the left and right hand side of the base done. Left hand side, it's got two square edges. The right hand side has a 45 degree miter cut in it to allow us to do 45 degree um, cuts. You'll notice that the gap here is not flush or not just the blade width away from the, sorry, from the square edge here, because when the table saw blade pivots and goes down at a 45, it doesn't pivot from the center of this line here, okay? It pivots below, so when it comes across, it's actually a far wider gap than you would expect. So we've got our 800 mil wide here, determined by the 800 mil T-slot fence. Uh, you can see, as I mentioned before, it's an L-shaped extrusion. I'm gonna now rip a piece of timber to fill in and support this back section. So I think the easiest way for me to mark this out accurately, I'm just gonna hang the extrusion over, make sure it's nice and flush up against a piece of MDF. And I'm simply just gonna mark a line along the back edge there and trim that down on the table saw. Hmm, that hasn't pulled in, so I'm gonna have to use a different type of countersink. But I'm gonna have to swap over to one of these rose head countersink pieces. All right, that's now sitting a bit flusher, so that's gonna be the best option there. Right, so now you'll have the extrusion screwed in, a nice piece of timber, a nice piece of MDF on the back edge there. So the whole idea of this sled build is so I could cut perpendicular right angles, but also cut an angle on the 45 if required. So just, I've only drawn this up on the computer, so I needed to test to see if this is actually going to work. So I've lined up the sled where it's going to be once assembled. Okay, I'm just gonna double check this 45 degree line is going to work. Should have enough clearance. Okay, so that's me 45 there. So plenty of blade clearance there. Probably could have come in a fair bit closer, but pretty happy with that. It's not gonna be a zero tolerance line. Looking back on that now, what I probably should have done, but I cut this side on the 45 and then trimmed it up square later, and then it would have got me that perfect, perfect shape in there. So I might make that adjustment on the plans. Would have had two perfect pieces. And here, this is only my first iteration. I'm happy with that. I'm just gonna keep going with that. You know what? I'm actually not happy with that. I'm gonna cut it again because I want I want as close to zero tolerance in that middle section as possible. Damn it. So this time I'm gonna cut 45 this way first and then I'll trim my width second. Right, so 
there'll be a little bit of back and forth here till I get this right. Uh, so to get as close of a zero tolerance as possible, I'm gonna do a bit of live build here. I wanna bend the blade, I wanna get that as snug as possible, and I'm squaring it off the back of the machine here. Overall mark here. Maybe we can cut that off square and that'll give me all right, so a bit of stuff around there, but probably better to do it right. All right, now that that's three cut, just give that a quick test. And that's coming down and that's much better. It's pretty much a zero tolerance clearance on that uh, riving knife there. So um, I blame my daughter for this because she says the favorite parts are when I explain my mistakes. She says that it's good to show that people make mistakes and you can just fix them. So if it wasn't for her, I probably would have left it as it was, but I'm, I'm happy that I went back and fixed that now. So now I've got a zero tolerance on the 45, a zero tolerance on the 90 degree flush, and we can move on to the next stage. So now that section's done, I'm going to work on the right hand side. This is going to have two T-tracks routed in and recessed into this section here. So I'm going to set the router up, get those done. But for this next step, I'm just going to use my little Makita laminate trimmer. And I'll show you a quick tip here, how to set your depth right. So our T-tracks going 10 mil deep. So if you've got a normal standard steel rule, these are actually one millimeter thick. So if you've got two of them, you lay one across the top, okay, and then you just wind your depth gauge down to nine mil, you're going to have an overall 10 mil mark there. All right, and then I'm going to lock that off. And I'm going to just do a quick test piece. Right, so I've got my laser template here. Essentially, this is gonna be the shape of the rear stock. I'm gonna cut a section off here to reduce some weight. Now, I'm just gonna cut some MDF strips, this same width here. Probably gonna go about three and glue those together and then use this as a routing template to create that back section. And once that's all done, we'll see if we can screw that onto that rear block and get some stability in this slit. All right, so I've got a template here for the front stock of the sled. I've done this out of six mil fell cutter ply. It's obviously not as accurate as something like acrylic or perspex. However, I'm just gonna give it a go and see how well that works for a flush trim router template. All right, now that glue has dried and the clamps are off, just going to trace these templates on for our front and rear stocks. Yes, I'm just going to quickly uh, run it off with the old uh, jigsaw here. Gonna put some double sided tape down for my template. I prefer to use this double sided tape that has a bit of padding. And the reason being is that I like to have a little bit of clearance between the blade and the bearing when we do these flush trims. It just lowers the risk that that acrylic section is gonna get hit on the edge of that little blade and shutter. Okay, so it'll give us a little bit of a clearance in here, a little bit of room to play with. Most people will use clear acrylic for this procedure. I think what that comes down to is it's just a bit easier to see what you're doing, but I had some scrap left over. I'm just gonna use it. All right, unfortunately, the flush trim bits that I have, my bottom up bit 
is slightly too short and my bearing down flush bit is also too short. So what I'm gonna do here is do half the distance with this blade that has the bearing at the base and then I go around and trim the top bearing that has it on the top. Okay, so what you can see here, you can see that the router bit has followed that profile. So now I'm just gonna turn it up the other way and I'm gonna use a top mounted bearing flush trim bit and it will use this part as a guide. No need to put the template back on there. It's actually gonna use this section as the template itself. So you can see the slight differences here where this first one has the bearing on the bottom, this one has the bearing on the top. So this has followed the template around the base. Kurt's followed the template around the base to give us this cut. Kurt's gone through that way. What we do now is gonna flip it up the other way and put this flush bearing in. The flush bearing will follow the part that is now the right profile, cleaning up the last bit that is left over. All right, so both those profiles have now been cut out. Now we'll look at fixing them to the base. So doing a bit of a dry assembly check here and should have checked my measurements. So what I've done on this back stock, I've only accounted for the height of this back plate, not the entire uh, height of the sled. So I'm one layer of MDF short for this back piece. And what that's going to do is that means that when this blade passes through here, that's going to be a pretty dangerous spot for that blade to just pop its head up through there. So pretty annoyed at that. However, I really need this sled to start making some new products. So I'm gonna retrofit a not so aesthetic solution to the back of that sled there. Uh, as there's a bit of weight to the design, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna mark out a bit of a semicircle around this area here, cut about a bit of that MDF out. It's not gonna reduce the weight all that much, but it's um, also just add a little bit of aesthetics. So rather than creating a fancy template or anything for this, all I'm gonna do here is keep my thumb on the hanging hole of my steel rule here and remove across to about 180 where the edge aligns there and I'm just going to pivot that around okay that's going to give me an arc there cut that section off and sand it down to shape Right, so I had a few options for some track slides. Um, I ended up going with just some cheap nylon strips here. That's already been machined to the exact size of these tracks. And that will provide a fairly decent slide. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm just gonna pack out the tracks. Just got a bit of plywood off cut there. That'll just make that a little bit proud of the surface there. Just run a bit of double-sided tape on here. And then I'm just gonna drop this down. I'm gonna try to just run it square off the back of my saw here and just do one side at a time. Getting it as close to that blade as possible so I've got zero, zero tolerance. All right, and hopefully I get enough stick on that double-sided tape that I can pull that out and then screw it in from the bottom side. All right, so we've got the track under there, ready to go. And I'm just gonna pre-drill these, screw it on open these little screws in. Make sure these are well countersunk so that that surface can slide a little bit. Use a bit of a scraper here to get that. Right, so the next thing I aim to do is to fix this stock, the rear stock to the back of this sled. Um, to do that, I'm gonna chuck her in the vise on the other side and screw her in. Right, so I've got this set up in the vise. I've got a clamp on the back side, which I'll show you in a second. Just quickly show you how I had that clamped up. So upside down in the twin vise, and that clamp was holding it nice and tight. Right, now I'm ready for the second side. 
she's clamped down. I'll pop a couple of screws in here, okay, and then I'll go on to doing that backside. All right, now flip her over. Look at that front stock on the actual saw itself. All right, so it's starting to take a bit of shape here now. All right, so I've got the got the rear stock on there. Now for this front stock, what I'm going to do is just pin it at either end. Okay, it's going to be just semi-attached, but I really want to make sure that this is square. Now, I can have a guess and just run that along there in the square edge and get it fairly accurate, but fairly accurate's not good enough. It needs to be 100% accurate. So what I'm going to do is pin it at each edge and then set it up on the table saw and use what's called the five cut squaring method. So I'm essentially going to put a piece of timber in here, a bit of plywood or MDF, I'm going to cut it, rotate it, cut it, rotate it, cut it, rotate it four times. And then on the fifth time, I'm going to cut a little strip off and then I'm going to use a measurement or a calculation or a formula to calculate how out of square it is and make some adjustments. That's going to be my fixed pivot point, and then this edge is going to be my adjustment edge. See how well it works. All right, so I'm yet to attach this rear stock yet. However, I just need to sort out the squareness of that rail first. I've got to run the saw right through this section here, and then also through the aluminium over there. So I've chucked an old blade on. This is gonna be a bit sketchy, a bit, a bit dangerous, but I'm to start with, just gonna go the height of a piece of plywood to be able to do the five cut procedure. Once I've done that, I'll then put my safety block on the rear side of this uh, sled and take it from there. Uh, now I couldn't really find a bigger, bigger piece of timber, so ideally this would be a little bit bigger than this. I'm going to cut four times and then on the fifth time cut a little strip off and do some calculations. So essentially what you do, what I'm going to do now is I'll have, I'll measure both ends and then measure the distance and do the formula, calculate however it's out and make some adjustments. So for A we've got 36.2, B we have 36.1, so we are 0.1 of a millimetre out over the distance of 211.1. Now I'm just going to use this calculator and see how far we're out. Right, with my first attempt at this five cut squaring process, ended up pretty close, only 0.09 of a millimetre out over the distance of this pivot point. So underneath here, I have a screw. Over here, I have a temporary screw, and I'm gonna have to pivot that. So using that calculation and that formula, it was a positive number. So with a positive number, I've got to bring this back on the pivot. 0.09 of a millimeter. Basically just gonna give this a bit of a tap, pin another screw just beside it, do another five cut process and see how square that ends up. So 59.96 on one end and 59.96 on the other and that is perfectly squared. So I'm pretty happy with that, whether that was a fluke or not, I don't care. It's only taken me one adjustment to get that spot on. So it doesn't move at all. I've left the tra I've left the sled in the tracks and I'm just gonna add the last fixing screws underneath while it's still in situ. And I can guarantee it won't move. I've just allowed for the angle of that saw blade there, that 45. Uh, haven't put any screws anywhere near here because I still haven't cut that 45 guide through here yet and I want to make sure I don't clip the top of that screw when I do so. So I've moved that screw back a little bit further over here. Right, so I'm now gonna attach this rear stock guard here. As I mentioned previously, I didn't allow enough, or I didn't include enough layers of MDF here. I forgot to account for the actual base, bit of a school built boy error there. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this on first and then I'm just gonna screw another block to the top here. Okay, the idea behind this shape was that 
I know that if I keep my thumbs on the outside of these guards here, it's going to be clear from the blade, so I'm going to have a very low risk of, of getting in contact with that blade. All right, to do this, I'm just going to use a, a 10 mil bit here to countersink some holes. I'm going to screw it into the top section only, otherwise it might pull that uh, guard out of alignment again. All right, so just in the top here, I'm going to pin this in. Recessing in about 10 millimeters. All right, so that's pretty solid there. All right, so I will actually fix this up properly one day, but I am in urgent need of actually using this sled to make some new products. So I'm just gonna chuck this block on top here. That'll allow me to actually start using this sled. All right, not as aesthetically pleasing as it would have been, but it's still gonna function properly. All right, for this next section, I only cut up through here about 20 mil just to cover the distance of the plywood for that five-way cut method. I'm gonna be cutting up to about 50 mil high, so I'm gonna set the blade now to 50 mil high so I can cut my guide through both stocks. I've got my old blade on here so I can go through this aluminium very slowly, very carefully. Right, oh guys, well there we have it. This is my first attempt at building a cross-cut sled. I'm very happy with how it turned out. I'm especially impressed with how accurate the miters cut. I'm really uh, looking forward to producing some new woodwork products that uh, require that method. I'm also very happy with how well this sliding docking guide rail works. Very handy for repeat cuts. I will make some more additions to this sled eventually. I'm going to include an angled shadow board on here as well as an adjustable rail that will slide up and down on these T-slot tracks to assist in cutting material on multiple different angles. And the main reason I created this cross-cut sled is that if you put a decent cross-cut blade in your table saw, you're gonna get really accurate cuts. You're gonna have less splintering than you would achieve on a drop saw. And especially when it comes to cutting a lot of these 45 degree angles, it's a lot safer and more efficient to cut it on a sled rather than the drop saw. So having this sled is going to enable me to increase my product line and I'm really looking forward to starting on some of those products soon. So I understand this video has probably dragged on a little bit more than I expected. I do appreciate everybody that has watched this all the way through. Please stick around as I get better at making these videos more concise. And thanks again for your support. If you'd like to subscribe, like and share this video, it'd also be much appreciated. So again, I thank you for watching and I particularly thank those of you that have been purchasing products from my store that really help support the channel. I'd love to keep making these videos and I'd appreciate your feedbacks. If you wanna put something in the comments, I'd really appreciate that. And wrapping up with just a quick shameless plug, I do have some products available over on my website. If you would like to support the channel financially, this is probably the best way to do so. And if anyone would like to sponsor a future video, please flick me an email and see if we can work something out. Seriously guys, thanks a lot, and I'll see you in my next video. Cheers.